came across this little video here and it's really interesting it's a one-liner in Commodore 64 basic and when you run it you get this amazing little maze and it's doing that by randomly displaying one of two characters oh, forward slash or backward slash now this was a fairly popular thing to do in the 80s cram as much code as possible in a single line I remember being in a computer shop and there would be these computers on display, these Commodore 64s, MSX, Spectrum, all that type of stuff. And you would just go behind the computer and type in a smart or what you thought was a smart piece of code yielding these amazing or in your mind amazing results. In any, in any case, mine were never as good as the one I just showed you because it's in its simplicity. It's just marvelous. So I got inspired by this and thought, let's do something with this in DaVinci Resolve slash Fusion. Uh, and that led to the intro video and to this tutorial. So let's dive right into it. So we're here in DaVinci Resolve and we're starting with a blank Fusion composition. There we go. And let's drag it out a bit to make it a bit longer and then head into the Fusion page. So let's first see what we're going to create by importing the file you can download from my website. And there we go. And we'll have to wait a bit and there it is. And we'll need to bring back in the media out because it was deleted and let's pipe it in there. The first 2D version of my maze. And you can see it here in viewport one. And if I select the custom tool, right? And let's tidy it up a tiny bit. Uh, let's reselect it and you see a, a number of parameters I defined or variables and you can see here the gap that's the gap between the individual individual pieces and the random number you can really randomly generate a maze and when I change here the number of columns and rows you can actually basically change the scaling of the overall maze but you will need to sort of change the gap and the wall size as well to basically get the desired effect. And you can see that here, I need to tweak it a bit and I'll need to probably zoom in. And there you go. Now I'll, I've got a maze twice the original size. You can probably optimize it and link the parameters, but hey ho, that's up to you. Uh, back to the original and let's have a look at the 3D example. And let's switch the lights on. And this is the type of thing you saw in the intro video. And by the way, the intro video, the full composition is available on my Patreon site. So please become a patron. It would really help me. In any case, let's recreate this from scratch. Let's start with a P emitter and then a P render. Uh, next thing we want to do is to create the particle, the bitmap for the particle. So I'm creating a background node and I'm changing the resolution to 100 by 100. I had to untick the auto resolution here. Uh, let's change the color to white as well. And once we've done that, let's create a mask, right? And let's do it like that. One height and the width 0.1 so we get a little line so there we go and now we'll change the uh, style to bitmap in the p emitter and then we can pipe in the background and presto if we then display the p emitter we see little lines uh, what we do need to do in the p emitter is set it to 2d in this particular case because we want to have a, a flat 2d particle system and then back in the particle system I'll set the size to one, makes it all a bit easier. And I set the lifespan to 1000, just in case our timeline is very long or as long as a thousand frames. 
Uh, next one, and very critically, we'll add in the P custom, and we're going to define the little variables. Well, the variables. So I do the edit controls and define the first one, and I'll probably speed up the other ones. So there we go, it's columns. And I want to have that on the numbers tab, and it's an integer and a slider control. There we go. And now I'll speed up the rest. Let's set some default values. So I'm going to select 30 columns and about 22 rows. That's for the aspect ratio. And I put in a gap. I predetermined these, by the way. And a wall size of one. And the randomizer can be set to zero. Next stage is that we're going to add some expressions. If you've never worked with those before, especially in the context of P Custom, do check out my Unleash the Power of Particles tutorial link above here or below here. So in any case, let's ho head over to the inter tab and type in ID minus one to sort of normalize the particle IDs to set the first particle to one. And in the second one, we're going to type in an uh, expression rend as open brackets 0, 0,1, 0, I1. And then I need to check, I need to add the randomizer. And it was N4, so I'm adding that in the fourth number variable. And then let's have a look again at the particle tab and head down to the rotation because we want to add the rotation in. So let's have a look. So if we type in 45, it will point to the left, minus 45 to the right, backslash, forward slash, right? So if you type in an expression, if I2 is larger than 0 0.5, then make it 45, otherwise minus 45. So for half of the particles, it will be set to left. For the other ones, set to right, depending on the particle ID. That's the randomization. So we're going to position the particle based on its ID, which we normalize to I1. And then we can, because I1 is 1, next one's I2, it would be very spaced apart. So we need to multiply it by the gap, which is N3 which means they're spaced close together. Let's set the Z to zero because we don't need to have that. Next one up, let's determine the right number of particles, which would be basically the number of columns times the number of rows. So let's pin this one and let's head over to the P emitter to the number, add in an expression, if with double I, time equals zero, comma, and then pick whip the columns times asterisk the rows i.e the total number of particles comma zero close brackets so first frame of the composition total numbers we need and then subsequently zero and when we then go back into the b custom and then we see okay we probably need to have a look at uh, repositioning things so minus 0 0.5 explained in my aforementioned tutorial. But we also need to ensure that it doesn't exceed the number of columns by using the modulo function, again, explained in my aforementioned tutorial, Unleash the Power of Particles. Um, so that works. It looks a bit messy right now, but uh, we will fix that by working on the position with the seal function. Again, I sound like a broken record, but it is explained beforehand and would become a very long tutorial if we do it again. But you can see the maze freaking appearing. How awesome is that? And we can now just change the randomizer and it works. Wall size doesn't work yet. So what do we need to do? Head back to the particle tab and in the size one, all we need to do is type in N5 and now the wall size will work as well, as you can see here. So presto. So I do realize it is all very condensed and it's kind of hard to target this in the right way. Some people may find it too hard to follow. Others may find it too slow, but I can just strongly recommend that you check out my earlier tutorials. So in any case, um, for the 3D example, it's much of the same, but all I do is at the end of the P render, I add a replicate 
uh, 3D and I replaced the particles with 3D geometry and um, very important about the P custom is nearly the same but for the P emitter I set the style to blob I don't need a bitmap anymore but a point would not work properly uh, trust me on that um, and for the uh, P custom I changed some of the parameters a tiny bit not much and um, you can see you can change any of the parameters you know the rows and columns and such and that will update quite nicely there you go the columns the gap uh, it, it, it all works and again in my intro video I make use of this again if you're interested the whole file is available on my patreon site last time I will mention that now as you can see the I have a shape 3d feeding into the replicate 3d and the important thing is it's set to TBN aligned so it aligns with the rotation of the particles the incoming particles and that's really all I had to say about this so I hope this was uh, useful to you guys as you've seen in the intro video you can do some really interesting stuff with this it's not just a flat 3d maze use it as a starting point and also maybe change it with a, a different shape rather than having a rectangle in there have something different experiment that's all what it is all about really so uh, i hope you guys enjoyed this in the meantime take care stay safe see you later bye bye